Yes, yes, Massive Room crew back once again with another video. And today this video is about a computer upgrade. I'm going to be upgrading my 1.1 Mac Pro to my 5.1 Mac Pro. Uh, this is actually a quite a long process uh, and this is the kind of video diary that I kept of it while I was doing it. Run into quite a lot of troubles uh, but I think I've got there in the end and I'm actually running on it now and it seems to be running sweet. Videos are running much better so I decided to share the whole process with you. Just to let you know this is Super Studio Geek stuff going into my DAO, changing parts etc. Um, good to know if you need to uh, you know, upgrade your machine at any time uh, in the future. I, I managed to cut, recover the hard drive that went down that had the Red Now Remix videos. So I'm going to be uploading those as scheduled in the next videos. So check it out. USB. Free USB yes, yes, Massive and Crew back again with another video and today's video is about time for me to upgrade. Um, I've basically been using uh, my Mac Pro uh, 1.1 for a while um, and that's been going really well uh, but unfortunately it's come to the point where a lot of the software requires updating I've got a few people sending me uh, software to review um, Cubase 9 is not so compatible and as well as that with the operating system that I've got on this computer was patched from another computer and uh, I spoke to one of the guys from Native Instruments and they were basically telling me uh, the reason why um, it couldn't find half of my plugins and stuff is because um, it was installed on another computer and it's got its kind of wires crossed if you like. So Cubase was acting a bit strange, the media play wasn't quite working well. Now the biggest thing is, is uh, for this experiment is that I've got a Mac Pro 5.1 and I'm in the process of getting all of my stuff that I had on this computer which is the 1.1 and putting it on the 5.1. This 5.1 is fully souped up. It's got like 32 gig of RAM in it, a solid state drive, two terabyte hard drive, but I'm gonna take some hard drives out of this one, and I'm also gonna put it into this one. But the, the task that I've got now, instead of just doing migration assistant, um, I'm having to reinstall all my software that I had on this computer and put it on here, which means re-downloading all of the Steinberg stuff, re putting Ultimate back on there, re-putting some of my plugins, uh, Omnisphere, all my major plugins that I like to use. I have to basically go through the whole lot again and install everything. So I'm working on that at the moment. The other thing as well that I've had to experiment with is, is on this Mac, um, I've got 10.95, uh, sorry, not 10, sorry, 9.5. OS X. As you can see on this one, it's downloading all the software. So on this one is 10.12.5. So I've heard that the UAD Apollos quad and also the UAD cards that I've got in here because I've got some US UID UAD PCI cards. I've heard that they don't work um, on 10.12, but I've also read somewhere where there's a flash update, a, um, a firmware update. And this will make them work. So I'm going from a totally sort of workable Mac where I can build tunes on to a Mac that is sort of unknown. But if it pulls off on this Mac, um, it will uh, work really well. Comment down below and let me know if you've used 10.12 for music uh, and also if you've used 10.12 for UAD and uh, UAD cars like UAD2, Apollo uh, 8 and let me know what you think, if it will work, if it's worked in the past, if you've had any problems with it. Also, if you've got any VST plugins that don't work with 10.12, comment down below so people can sort of use this thread as some sort of useful feedback because I've looked out there, there's no um, information on that. I'm also looking to use this brother uh label i'm not it's not an advert for them by the way but i've just thought this little cool gadget was going for sort of decent price in maplins uh and i thought i would use it because it does labels and i'm going to use this to sort of label all my plugs and stuff oops nearly fell on the floor label all my plugs and stuff so that i can fly, find stuff because i've got like literally it's a mess in there please excuse it 
if you look in the corner down there somewhere, you see all my plugs. I don't know what's what. Now, obviously it's better to have all this stuff wired in. Uh, back in the day, I used to wire my whole studio from uh, with one plug socket which I don't recommend you guys do and it was really terrible I used to uh, if the plug if the plug socket went um, I used to put silver foil in it so to make it sort of go longer but to be fair I could have started a fire and I didn't even know like, what I know now you know uh, but so I was lucky uh, that a lot of the old studio gear didn't take up as much wattage and stuff but a proper way to do it is get everything called wired in correctly and uh you know go for it so i am going to let you know how it goes from my one mac to the next i'm going to post a report up here in fast forward from now probably going to take me best part of five six hours to do this uh but i'm just going to just pursue get what i can install what i can on the new mac and hopefully this is going to be light at the end of the tunnel because it's a super computer it's really fast it's not the latest iCore 7, but mate, this is a workhorse, it's a beast. You know me, I like to stay a little bit behind technology. I'm not really into too much of the new, uh, you know, expensive Mac Pro because I've still got my UAD2 PCI cards and I'm not quite ready to switch over to Thunderbolt. Comment down below, let me know what your setup is, let me know what you're using. Um, it'd be great to hear from you guys if anyone's out there using Mac for setups and what your experience is with the different OSs and stuff. Okay guys, so basically I went to um, install all my software onto the new Mac. Uh, unfortunately, um, it has uh, only 256 megabytes. 256 gigabyte, gigabyte. Um, on the hard disk um, and it's like the SSD fast, super fast hard, hard disk. So unfortunately, um, all my software, I've checked it out, will not fit onto this 256 now the applications won't go onto a uh, second hard drive because that's one of the minuses of running um, on a mac um, if you know of a way to do it comment down below but unfortunately um what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to get a, um, a, a sort of a semi-hybrid drive that's got two terabytes on it and i'm going to use that to put into the new mac and use the ssd for some sounds or something or something like that um so comment down below let me know what you think about that <laughs> Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte hybrid drive. About that. Okay, guys, excuse the mess, transition in the process. Okay, so plan B is I'm going to use the time machine back up from here, which is 10.95, and I'm going to install this hard drive on this back here. Right? And I'm going to put a new OS on there and then I'm going to try and import from here onto there and see how that works. I know that won't fix all my sort of permission problems etc but 1.2 terabytes of software to reinstall that's going to take forever so I'm trying to find a quick way around it and then try and resolve my Cubase issue where my media bay just keeps on sort of searching for nothing and never finds it. Another thing to consider as well is that I can't have Native Instruments complete on a 256 drive. It just There's just not enough space on it to install anything. So um, I am sort of thinking about the possibilities of a 500 gig SSD. But I tell you what, it's probably better if I just go for this hybrid, as I said for now, um, and just wait for the prices to come down on the SSD. Because at the moment, the SSDs are astronomical if you want to go anything bigger than like 256. We're talking like 600 quid for a hard drive, and that is ridiculous. And I remember when all the SATAs first came out, they were really expensive, um, and now they're you know, you can pick up a SATA two terabytes for like 70 quid. I think I paid for this one. So, to be fair, time is of the essence, time will tell, the prices will come down, and 
the future of Cubase would be, you know, lightning speed loading and super fast uh, sample access and no more waiting for instruments to load and stuff, which is going to be quite cool. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that in the future, peeps. And on top of that, anyway, because this Mac's much faster than the old one, um, to be fair, you, I'm going to see a real serious increase in speed. Also, the mem there's more memory to work with. So it can be more powerful Mac, more processors. Uh, so I'm definitely going to notice some speed increases. It would be nice to have it lightning speed, but, you know, um, you know, just got to work with what I've got. And I'm happy that the fact that I've been able to upgrade my Apple Mac. Uh, for those of you wondering what this is, just torchlight. So, guys, um, I'm going to keep you posted and I'll see you in a bit. So this is one of the problems that I'm updating my computer for. But lo and behold, even on a 256 drive, um, it's still doing this thing with the media bay. I obviously thought this was to do with the hard drive or permissions or everything, but this is a fresh Mac install. And you can see that when I go to the media bay and I go to do a search, all I'm getting is this box that spins around now i don't know how long it's going to go on for okay so that came back but that took quite a while um and that's on an ssd drive so does it really make a difference with speed um okay that was that sort of loaded up quite quickly uh, let's have a look so we've got instrument tracks here we've got dark planet let's have anxiety attack let's double click that and how long does that take to load? Pretty quick. Okay, go to VST Instruments. Dark Planet. Let's see how quick we flick through the sounds. Okay, that's quite quick. In fact, that's super fast. So let's see if it, it actually flicks through this quick when I install the other drive. So guys, this is the SSD drive. As you can see, there's no moving parts inside and it's just lightning quick, but it's only 256. So if you're doing music uh, and stuff and you've got a lot of apps like me, uh, this is not going to work for you because it's too small because I need at least 1.2 terabytes just for my apps alone. As you can see, I'm booting up from the, from the USB drive, which was supplied to buy Mac, Mac Bank with this actual computer. So what I'm going to do is boot up, hopefully install Mac OS X on that two terabyte drive, and then try um, uh, time, um, time, time machine, sorry, it's getting late, time machine uh, restore and see what happens. Okay guys, so we're now at the final stages of this upgrade. Um, I'm about to take all of my PCI cards out of here and pop them over to this machine and also unplug all USB cables, etc. and plug them in. Um, I had to relabel one of my hard drives to match the old hard old, old computer hard drive name, uh, which was the main Mac OS X hard drive. But apart from that, um, it's all all seemed to be going pretty well. Everything's looking okay and stuff seems to be working faster. I did a hard drive test um, versus the SSD uh, drive, uh, which I was pretty shocked to find out this is probably about nearly 10 times faster than the hybrid drive that I've got in it at the moment, but it's just simply not too, not big enough. Uh, I ran a couple of tests with that on another video and I will show you what that looks like. Another thing I, did, I didn't mention is that um, Halfway through, well, not even half, quarter way through the upgrade, uh, I've, it suggested that I plugged in an, an Ethernet cable. So I went and grabbed a uh, sort of an Ethernet Cat5 cable and plugged it into the back of each Mac. And then it upgraded to Ethernet. I left it overnight, came back down, and the whole process probably took about eight hours or so. So, so guys, as you can see, I'm going to take out these PCI cards from here and pop them in over on my other Mac here. Now hopefully there's enough slots, fingers crossed. Another little mission peeps is on the actual uh, new 5.1 Mac, newer, sorry, 5.1 Mac, the um, hard drive holder is actually longer. So I'm gonna have to take all these out, all my drives out, and then uh, re-screw them in to make them fit. Because you can see, um, what happens with this is 
when you push the drive in um, because this is all the way back here I think these need to be a little bit fur these need to be a bit further up so I'm gonna have to adjust that okay so those of you who don't know it's just a quick heads up this card here um, I've got two of them in my computer uh, basically uh, this gives you more DSP and it's made by UAD uh, they have a number of plugins uh, that you can purchase with it they give you a few free to start you off um, and these sound really good and the idea of these is that you can have lots of processing power compressors limiters and stuff um, and all the power goes onto this card all, all, all the processor goes processing power goes onto this processing chip here um, and uh, it doesn't affect your computer's power uh, which is really cool um, so and they also sound really good as well because they simulate the real thing which um, you know a lot of people swear by uh, you know google it YouTube it and you can see demos and stuff on that on there so there you have it folks my old Apple Mac 1.1 served me well uh, still serving me to this day because uh, I'm going to use this now for graphics only uh, in my print shop powerful piece of kit uh, you know great for the money um, most Mac users look at these as sort of trash now but seriously man there's serious power under the hood even for the old school ones there's still lots that is compatible with just a quick glimpse inside the uh, Mac Pro 5.1 as you can see, it's, uh, it's it's pretty fat looking uh, inside. And uh, if you look over here, you can see all the memory. It's like 32 gig of memory. Um, and it seems to have the same graphics card as my 1.1, but I actually upgraded that that card, the ATI Radeon 5770 or something like that. Um, and you can see inside looks a lot more sleek. Uh, I've loaded up my hard drives now. I'm just gonna put my PCI cards in. I also had to change a few cables because the new Max got different firewire connections on it and also you have to buy a couple of these converters from, from eBay which convert the old firewire into the new ones so guys that's an insight into what I've been up to for the last two weeks sorting out my computer it seems to be smoothed out now I'm going to do another video where I'll give you a little kind of sh uh, run show you a few of the improvements um, if you found that video useful please give it a thumbs up take care God bless Peace.